Hello, what's up YouTube, Bronix with it and Arturo and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys your retouching workflow in Capture One. So if at all you're a beginner at Capture One, this is going to be meant for you. So I'll show you guys the different adjustments and advantages of Capture One because this is a more professional kind of interface for most photographers and it is really nice if at all you want best and professional results. So you can see right now I'm in my Capture One interface and I'm using Capture One 21. And before you can be wondering why my screen is looking like this. So first of all, the interface of Capture One is really like you have a timeline right here and you have the image right here. And for other people, a timeline can be either on the left or right. So let me show you guys why mine is this way. So in order to have this kind of interface that looks like camera row or maybe Lightroom itself, you have to first of all come to window and come to workspace then by default your workspace is going to be a uh, way different it's going to be like this so this is going to be your default you'll have these options to the left hand side and you're going to have the images right here on the right hand side so in order to have the interface like i had because i was so used to camera and maybe Lightroom that I was used to these options being on the right hand side of my screen so in order to get them on the right hand side I'm going to simply come to window and come into workspace and come to migration so when I do migration you, I get back my interface looking like this with my adjustments on the right hand side and the image right down here below so if at all I want to maybe increase on the display of the image, I'm going to simply come here and I'm just going to drag down to increase on the size just like that. So left click and drag down. So when I'm done doing all that, you know like this is a raw file. So what you, ha what you have to know in Capture One, you can easily customize all the tools you want. So for example, if at all, you simply right click here you have customized toolbar so if at all you want to customize your toolbar you can simply come and look for whichever you want for example if at all we need maybe this variance you can simply click on it and drag and drop it right here and you'll have it and if at all you want to eliminate maybe a given tool you can simply I pick it and drop it back right here so that is how this basically works if at all you want to customize your interface in whichever way you want and when you're done doing all that you can come and simply hit done and you'll have your options right above here so in order to use this capture one you have to notice that it also has layers like we do in Photoshop so the very first thing you have to notice is if at all you want to import, you can simply come right here to file and you can import images from this option right here. And if at all you want to do any adjustments, so right here you'll have a histogram showing the Im image information. So like for this image, shot at ISO 100 uh, and 1 out of 320th of a second at F5. So the very first thing you have to notice is uh, these settings right here. So we have white balance. So in order to customize this, you can simply select this and maybe move it up. If at all you want these settings on top of the white balance, or you can just drag it back down here and you'll have it the way it is meant to look. So the very first thing we are going to do for this particular image, I always make sure that whenever I'm editing, I always turn on my exposure warning so if at all you want it off, you can come and turn it off just like that. So the exposure warning basically shows you the brightest areas that look blown out so that you can edit your image really in a nice and friendly manner. So if at all you want to do adjustments to, for example, this image, what I would do, so this is basically more of my workflow in Capture One. So what I would do for this particular image, I would simply first of all come down to my 
high dynamic range and I'm just going to simply knock down my highlights at around negative 42 then I'm also going to do the same for the whites just like that so simply turn up my shadows and open them up slightly to around 8 I won't take it all the way up so 8 is going to be fine for this image and I'm going to simply turn up my blacks because I felt like I was losing the information right on the hair right here that's why I've decided to push up my blacks to open up the blacks even more then after doing that we have this other adjustment so I'm just going to push in a little bit of the contrast like that to around 2 then down here we have some kind of clarity uh, clarity basically adds some kind of sharpness or texture to the, the image so come to the clarity and I'm just going to knock it up just like that so if at all I turn the character down you can see the image turns out to if at all I hit command plus it turns out to look a little pale and if at all I turn it all the way up you can see the texture is too much for this case so just adding a little is going to change this image so I think two will do for this image and after doing that we have the dehaze option so if at all you have been shooting and you have that kind of mist or your images look a little bit hazy you can play around with this slider so you can see that this gets rid of that kind of hazy or haze to the image it removes it then after this i would prefer to come down here and under curves we have the luma curve red and green so you can play around with the curves like we do have in photoshop but i really like playing around with my curves then we have the levels adjustment layer so this basically adds contrast in specific areas so if at all i pull this in you can see i'm adding contrast in the darks or the blacks of the image and this uh, just brightens up the highlights just a little bit so I'm just going to push it in. So if at all you want to do or look at the adjustments you did on a particular case, you can hold down Option or Alt and simply click right here to see the effect it has made to your image. So that is how this works. Then after I feel like I am comfortable with all this, I have the option right here which says Base Characteristics. So under base characteristics, we have the ICC profile. Basically, you have to choose the ICC profile depending on the kind of image you do have. So if at all you have maybe an image from an icon, you can simply come and choose the ICC profile, like which correlates with your camera or your camera rather. So for this case, I'm just going, since mine is listed right here, I prefer to go with pro standard because I want to eliminate the magentas in this image so I'm just going to zoom in to show you guys the before and after so basically option or alt the before and after you can see the difference we have right now we had so many magentas and I just eliminated those magentas from the image so the last thing we want to do for this adjustment we can see you can even come and add sharpening to your image depending on what you want to do or the look you're going in for but the very important thing we want to do for this particular image is the color grading process and it is the major emphasis for this particular tutorial so before you do any color grading always and always ensure that you create a new layer because you want to come back and adjust those settings or reduce on the opacity that's why i mentioned the important thing of maybe the layers right above here at the beginning of this first tutorial so if at all you right click right here we have new empty layer and new field layer new clone layer and new hill layer so if at all you would want to maybe color grade i would prefer that we use the new field layer option so you can see this has been created and it has an opacity of 100% as it is shown here. So if at all 
I turn it down, you can see it is also reducing on the opacity. So I, I, I'm just going to rename that to maybe color grading. So I've just double clicked right here and I've managed to rename this option right here. So what I want to do, I'm going to come all the way down to my color option or color grading option. So under the color editor, first of all, we have the basic, that is the HSO panel right here. We have basic and we have hue, saturation and luminous for each and every color blue. We have these aquas and we have greens, we have yellows and oranges plus the reds. Then we have the advanced tab by uh, this works on all the colors basically and we have skin tones. So for this case, we want color grade skin tones for my handsome beautiful portrait. So for skin tones, we have this option which says the color picker tool or if at all you are familiar with Photoshop, it is called the eyedropper tool. So in this eyedropper tool, you can just simply come and select it. So when you select this eyedropper tool and zoom into the image by holding down command plus, it makes it or it enables you sample from the area that you want the overall image to look like. When you're going to do the color grading so if at all i want my whole image to have maybe this particular color i'm just going to click right there and when you click there you're going to notice that i has sampled the colors in this uh, particular area so just click that and you can see it has sampled and the skin tones right here belong to yellows, oranges, reds, and some little bit of magenta. So we want to color grade the image to look better and have uniform skin tones, depending on our liking. So on the right hand side, we have the saturation. And on the left hand side, we have the saturation panel. And right here, we have the luminance panel or option. So when you do this, come down here after you have selected the color and we have the hue option right here so if at all i'm um, to zoom in maybe for purposes of having more emphasis then if at all i turn up i go down to my uniformity option remember, remember we want to have uniform skin tones for this particular image so if at all i start pushing up my hues you're going to notice that the image is having or is turning out to have that nice and uniform color in the skin tones so i'm just going to do this and zoom in so that uh, we can see this well so you have to zoom in by using ctrl or command plus so just move this up a little bit and you can easily add saturation if at all you want to so when you feel like you have more of colors that are maybe more than another color that's why you have the amount option so under amount you can simply you can simply add magentas or add a greens to the image so for this case you're just going to add some little bit of greens to reduce on the amount of magentas in the skin tone so i think at around 0 0.5 is enough and now we can now drop down the saturation in the skin tones i think that looks fine so let's say before and after so in Capture we have this option which shows uh, before and after. So when you click on it, it brings up this option right here. So when you click and move, we have the after and you can see the before and after, before, after. And the image is really turning out to look nice and have those nice skin tones. So always make sure that you turn this off because it's going to be confusing if at all you're editing with it. So after feeling like you have really done the best and you're comfortable, if at all you feel like you have done so much, for example, in the color grading process, you can simply come and reduce on the opacity of your color grading. Or if at all you want to eliminate colors from a particular area, you can simply come and get your eraser tool. So this is the eraser tool. And when you select it, make sure that this layer is selected or the color grade layer is selected. So you can zoom in and start painting over to 
remove the color grading effect from particular areas just like that and if at all you have been editing maybe for example a lipstick or eyeshadow you can come and reduce the or remove the color grading from those particular areas in order not to distort makeup in those areas so when you feel like you're done with all that and your image is really looking nice for you in order to maybe export it maybe in photoshop for more skin retouching and color grading what you have to do basically is coming right here to image so you come right here to image in order to export it in maybe photoshop or any other software you want to edit the image further on so you just come to image and come to edit with and you can select uh, photoshop and if at all you have any other application you want to use to maybe do more editing or do a little bit of touch-ups you can simply select other so for this case i'm just going to select a uh, photoshop 2020 so the format i would always recommend you guys to use is the tiff format because this has so much information and it not only has so much information it has so much detail and the colors are really nice and embedded in all your images so make sure you always use tiff because that's what i recommend and i always prefer 16 bit because the information embedded in a 16 bit image it gives me like so much freedom to play around with the information embedded in the images that are 16 bit other than the 8 bit images that provide limited information so I prefer to use a resolution of around 300 the scale is fixed and 100% and options I prefer the uncompressed so I prefer the uncompressed version and after you have done all that and you feel like you're comfortable with all those options you can come and hit edit, edit variants and when you click that is going to open the image into Photoshop within just a few seconds where you can do further color grading and maybe doing skin retouching onto the images so this is the image in Photoshop so basically this has been how to color grade or edit your images in Capture One and if at all you're new and you have learned something from this story don't forget to give this video a like so that youtube can rank it highly and don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section and subscribe this channel and that will be important to me to create more content for you guys to learn and benefit from ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet another one don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating